Hey guys, even here, and we are one day out of Mr. Olympia. That's right, Mr. Olympia is starting tomorrow on Friday, and the finals are on Saturday. So if you want to watch the live stream, just type Mr. Olympia TV, and you will find it. But the live stream costs freaking $70. Can you believe that? I don't know how many of you are going to pay for that. So if you want to watch it live, you can go over there to so Mr. Olympia TV and purchase your ticket for the live stream. But if you want to watch my review, my analysis after this show happened, then you can subscribe to my channel. So here is the five guys, the top five classic physique guys, potentially. All these guys are looking great. They look lean and mean. And as you can see, Chris Bumstead brought back the mustache, the winning mustache. And we got this little interesting video of Chris Bumstead at the athletes check-in where they measured his height and his weight. They don't show it in the video, but from what I heard, he's 237 right now, which is below his weight cap, so Chris Bumstead is good. However, Terence Ruffin had to jog on the escalator with a lot of clothes on to sweat off, I think, one pound. I think he was one pound short, uh, one pound heavier than what his weight cap is, and that wasn't the case with Chris. So I don't know if Chris made the weight just barely, but I'm guessing maybe that's the case because he had to remove his pants. I don't think he would do this uh, because he doesn't want to show his physique until a show day. So if he was doing this, I'm guessing he was also like right at the weight cap. So what we see this year of Chris Bumstead is going to be his best ever. Take a look at the legs. He didn't really flex them, but you can kind of see the conditioning and he is lean. So as I was saying, this year, what we see on that stage from Chris is probably going to be the best Chris Bumstead that we will ever see. Last year, I think he had like 5 pounds to gain, and it seems like he gained those 5 pounds. So, I am expecting an improved version of Chris Bumstead this year. And is he going to be able to improve after this year? I doubt that. But this time around, I think he's going to be at his absolute best conditioning, development. Everything is going to be on point, and he's going to be a decisive winner. What about his brother-in-law, Ian Valier, 7th at the Mr. Olympia last year? This is his conditioning right now. As you can see, he's freaking shredded. Like, that stomach he has no fat and very little water that he will get rid of before the pre-judging. As you can see, he's still drinking water. And I think, from what I heard listening to him and his coach, Patrick Tour, Ian's approach is to drink water and have high sodium until the show. Because if he does any kind of manipulation, if he cuts a little water or sodium, uh, he gets really flat. So maybe he's going to cut it just a little bit, but I don't think he's going to do a lot. Because he has that kind of body that gets dry easily, but has trouble staying full. And in open bodybuilding especially, you need to have crazy fullness. I mean, if you want to stand next to the other mass monsters and still do well. Now, this is the video that Patrick Turian's coach posted on his Instagram. And in this mirror, in this uh, bathroom mirror, he looks, I mean, Ian looks absolutely ridiculous. Like, he looks shredded. I mean, he looks jacked. He looks really lean, really separated, really hard and gnarly and grainy, you name it. Like, he does look very, very freaky. And in my prediction video, I had him out of top 10. You know, I had him 11th. So, that's like four spots lower than what he was last year. And I could be wrong, man. I I'm pretty confident that Ian is going to bring good conditioning. And if everybody else brings their A game, I believe Ian will, because of his structural flaws, actually place out of top 10. But what is the likelihood of everybody bringing their absolute best? It's not very high. So if somebody, if a couple of guys slip, I think Ian is not going to do that. I think Ian is going to use this opportunity to, to actually beat those guys who might be better than him structurally, but they won't be as lean, as shredded, as full, as, as well peaked as him. So he is, he is very consistent with his conditioning. I think the only, the only one time that he failed with conditioning was at that Tampa Pro against Hunter Labrada. But that was a big mistake. He did something that he never really does, never did ever since. And after that show, he never missed his peak. So I think this time around, he's going to be at his absolute best conditioning. And I think he's going to peak properly. So I, I'm probably wrong. I think Ian is more likely they're not gonna be in that top 10. What do you guys think? All right, next we have a video, a full posing video of Rafael Brandau. And I'll have to be blunt and, and honest. 
I wonder what Brandon Curry was smoking when he said that Rafael Brandao is gonna be top 5 at the Mr. Olympia. I'm pretty sure that was before he saw this video, but I'm sure after he saw this one, if he saw it, he's scratching his head and, and thinking why did I say such a thing, because there is no way this guy is gonna be top 5. So before I say anything else, I gotta say, this is my favorite physique in Mr. Olympia stage. <laughs> I know how crazy it sounds, but this is the way I would like to look. This is a great classic physique. This is not an open bodybuilding physique, guys. Let's watch it again. Front double bicep looks absolutely amazing. It flows so well. Front lat spread, beautiful. Small waist, everything flows nicely. Side chest, very, very pretty. Chest looks kind of flat and his arms and shoulders as well. And hamstrings look kind of thin. Uh, here, the same thing, like in the side chest. Everything looks a little bit flat. Back looks pretty dry and it looks very, very aesthetic. Like great V taper, but it was always shallow and it still is. Like it's not as thick, as wide as, for example, I don't know, Big Ramy or <laughs> Pavilion Bonek or Hari Japan. Uh, abs and thighs, most muscular. A every pose looks really beautiful, but do I think he looks much bigger than Chris Bumstead, for example? I honestly don't. I know he's he's very heavy. He weighs a lot. There is no chance of him making the classic physique weight cap, but that's because his bones are very heavy. He is not that muscular. Let's be honest. Like, can you compare this muscle to Brandon Curry? Not even close, guys. Not even close. Yeah, the shape is beautiful, but as far as size, yeah, he's not even close to guys like Nick Walker, like Ian Wallier, like Andre Labrada, like Derek Lansford, Andrew Jack, or Michael Crijo. He's not that massive, and you can see it clearly in this video. Even though this lighting is pretty flattering, right? He still doesn't look very big. In my eyes, he doesn't look much bigger than most of those classic guys. I don't think he's much bigger than, for example, his fellow Brazilian, Ramondino. I don't see him being... I don't see Rafael Brandau dwarfing Ramondino or Chris Bumstead or really anybody from classic physique, let's say top 10. I mean, sure, he's a little bit bigger, but he's closer to classic than he is to the open, if you ask me. If you guys disagree, you can tell me down below. Now, let's check out Ramon Dino and his most recent physique update. I don't know why he's doing most muscular. I mean, he's a classic physique guy after all. But in these next couple of poses, he does... I mean, he looks like he's going to be at least third. I don't see him being beaten by Urs Kalacinski, no. Because he does look absolutely amazing. Like, in this front double, he looks absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I don't know. I don't really like his chest, side chest too much because... Uh, his chest kind of looks flat in that lower area and his forearms look really over dominant that they make his arms look a little bit small but I mean still a good pose what I really loved about his physique update is his freaking back and the conditioning in the glutes so as you can see he's shredded and we're gonna see that on stage but even in this video you can see that he's shredded because of those glutes and look at the back it looks like he improved that back a lot and it really reminds me of chris bumstead's back uh, back in the 2000 and let's say from 2009 to 2020 so somewhere in between he's not as massive as chris was 2020 but he's not as small as he was 2019 so somewhere in between in regards to back now, as far as the other poses, like uh, abs and thighs, looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, this twisted back shot as well. Uh, I think Terence Ruffin is still going to beat Ramondino, but I think Ramondino is going to beat Urs again. I think he's going to be third this year. We will see tomorrow, though. We also got some training footage from Samson Dauda's last workout before the show. And he looks good. Like, it looks like whatever him and Milo Sharcher were doing really paid off. You know, it seems like he really gained muscle, actual muscle, because right now he looks really dry. Look at how conditioned he is, how separated, how gnarly, how grainy his triceps are, how thin the skin looks on his shoulders and arms and his back and how much bigger and fuller he looks. So I still do believe that this is going to be the best version of Samson Dauda and he's going to make that top 10 this year. We also got a couple of photos from Wesley Wissers, but this one was the most interesting to me because his back 
really looked dry, separated, shredded. I think this is better conditioning than that France Yamamoto Pro show, where he was finally decently conditioned. That was like the only time ever that Wesley was in shape, that Wesley was conditioned. And I was curious whether he's gonna repeat that same shape coming worse or better. We'll see tomorrow, but in this photo, at least, he looks pretty dry, pretty conditioned, pretty separated. And so overall, I'm expecting a really good version of Wesley Wissers. Where he's gonna place, that is a good question. I don't know, I have no idea, he might be like top 5, top 6 if the judges really like his look or he might be like 20th if the judges don't like his shape because he has very unique shape and I think it all depends on what the judges like or dislike but he still was placing relatively highly in the past couple of years with, with horrible conditioning so if the conditioning is improved finally this year he's going to be rewarded for that, I believe so, so maybe he's gonna play higher than most people expect. And lastly, we have a little update of Akeem Williams, we haven't seen anything from this guy, he never posts anything, he is a shadow, he is like Dorian Yates used to be back in the day, even though today is this modern social media era, he doesn't care about that, he doesn't want to show his progress ever, and the last time we saw him, he won Tampa Pro, and we didn't see any freaking updates until like two days out. He just showed up and he killed everybody. And you guys gotta remember that this guy was sixth at a Mr. Olympia at one point. Last year he was ninth, but it wasn't his best conditioning ever. If he brings really good conditioning this year, where will he place? Well, based on this little video, you can see that he looks pretty dry in that side leg. So that's all we see, a little piece of his side leg. And it looks pretty dry. So I'm expecting this guy to be conditioned, I don't know if he's gonna be really really conditioned, he rarely ever is, he wins on size, on mass, because he's a freaking mass monster, and his back is his weakness, he has really high inserted lats, and the other thing is conditioning, he's rarely ever conditioned, but in this photo at least he looks pretty dry, I hope he's going to bring good conditioning uh, tomorrow at the Mr. Olympia, and that he's going to do really well, I mean if he, if he does that, if he's really conditioned, he could be in that top 10 again. I thought I was done with this video, but after I finished it, I saw this post made by Gilco Production and IFBB, this raw footage of Nick Walker posing for his coach Matt Jensen one day out of Mr. Olympia, and you can see in this video what Nick is looking like, and he definitely looks like a much improved version of himself from last year. It is a really close-up video and you can see every flaw that he has in his physique, but he still does look really conditioned, like this is top-notch conditioning and that's one of the things that Nick is known for. The other thing is muscularity and he has a ton of muscle, look at the Christmas tree there, he has a ton of muscle, look at the lats, how thick they are, he definitely improved that back, it wasn't bad last year, but it could have used some improvements, and that's exactly what he did, he improved that back, and also his chest, when he does, look at it, when he, look at this, when he flexes the chest, he has some crazy straight and separation that he never really had before, especially in the side chest, Check it out right here, look at the chest, his chest was a weak point last year, and now, is it still a weak point? Is it still a weak chest? <laughs> I don't think so, I don't think so, maybe his arms are over dominating everything and his chest included, but look at the chest, look at the serration, look at the separation, look at those lines, like he never really had those lines, and his chest was never this big, this thick, so if you're gonna talk about improvements, Nick Walker has definitely made them, he was 5th last year, arguably 4th, where he's gonna land this year, my guess, my prediction, he is going to win the Mr. Olympia 2022, whatever you guys think though, you can tell me down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, if you're not gonna pay for the pay-per-view, you can subscribe to my channel, you're gonna see what happens to the Mr. Olympia right here, after it happens, with my commentary and analysis, so guys, stay tuned, subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it, and thank you guys so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.